So here we are gonna learn the numerical which is based on the definition of gamma function and we will see how to solve such numericals by using the gamma function. Now here for that we have a question that prove that integration from 0 to infinity e raised to minus x cube upon root x dx into integration 0 to infinity y raised to 4 e raised to minus y raised to 6 dy is equal to pi by 9. Now the question is how to get the value of integration. So guys before starting let's understand let's learn the definition of gamma function. So here on the screen you have the definition of gamma function. So what is the definition of gamma function? So gamma function says that integration from 0 to infinity e raised to minus x x raised to n minus 1 is gamma n. It means whatever is the power of x we just have to add 1 and write down the same number over here in the gamma. You can observe easily that the this value which is inside the gamma is just 1 greater than the power of x. So if I want to solve that numerical by gamma function then I should bring all the integrations in this format. So first term should be exponential with power minus x or let's say if integration is in terms of y then it must be minus y and the second term must be algebraic as x raised to some constant and then we can apply the definition of gamma function. So guys now my aim would be to convert our question here you can see this question that to convert this question in the form of gamma function or the definition of gamma function and then I can use this definition as gamma n. So let's start. So here you can see that we have two terms. So we have one exponential term and we have algebraic term. And here also this is the exponential term and if I take this root x in the numerator root x is x raised to half when it comes in the numerator it becomes x raised to minus half. So here also we have exponential term with the algebraic term. So already we have two terms. Now the question is how to bring this in the def in the form of definition of gamma function. So for that guys we have we will first make this power of e as minus t or minus y or minus x. So guys uh, to solve such type of numericals I'll give you one hint and that hint is nothing but the general form of this type of numericals. So by using that general form you can compare any other numerical with that general form and you can get the answer by just looking at the observe just looking at the numerical. So here the general form is like this if we have the integration from 0 to infinity and we have form like this that is let's say e raised to minus a x raised to n and here we have let's say x raised to b dx so in such cases we put a x raised to n equals to t so this is the general form so by doing this what happens this power will become e raised to minus t and then by finding the differentiation by getting the value of dx we can automatically get the remaining algebraic term. So guys now these both integrations are matching with this form. So I am going to use this substitution. So let's start. So here for proof that we have two different integrations. So how we would start. So first of all we will consider first integration as i1, second one as i2 and then we will solve it individually. So let's start guys. So here I will say let i is equal to integration 0 to infinity e raised to minus x cube x raised to minus half dx into integration 0 to infinity e raised to minus y raised to 6 into y raised to 4 dy. Now guys let's solve it individually so here I'll say therefore i is equal to i1 into i2 and let's make it as equation number 1 so that when we'll find the value of i1 and i2 we can substitute it in the equation number 1 to get the final answer. So i1 is integration from 0 to infinity e raised to minus x cube x raised to minus half dx 
Now let's match this with the general form. So the power of e is minus x cube. Let's put x cube as t. So here I'll say put x cube equals to t. So this will give us x as t raised to 1 by 3. So dx will become 1 by 3 t raised to minus 2 by 3 dt. Now let's talk about the limits. So the limit for x is from 0 to infinity. Let's find it out for t. So when x is 0, 0 cube is 0, t will be 0. When x is infinity, infinity cube, infinity, t is infinity. Now let's put all the values in the integration. So here we will get integration 0 to infinity will remain as it is e raised to minus t and here we will make the respective changes. So i1 is equal to integration 0 to infinity e raised to minus t. Now we have x raised to minus half and dx. So value of x is t raised to 1 by 3. So here I will say it is t raised to 1 by 3 whole raised to minus 1 by 2 and dx is 1 by 3 t raised to minus 2 by 3 dt. So guys here 1 by 3 is constant we can take it outside because we are integrating with respect to t. Now integration 0 to infinity as it is e raised to minus t that is exponential term as it is and now so here we can multiply the power so here we will get t raised to minus 1 by 6 into t raised to minus 2 by 3 dt. Now guys both terms are algebraic we can take it together so we will get 1 by 3 integration 0 to infinity e raised to minus t. Now when we'll take it together we have to add minus 1 by 6 with minus 2 by 3. So can you tell me fastly what is the addition of minus 1 by 6 with minus 2 by 3. Yes come on. So it's minus 5 by 6. So it is t raised to minus 5 by 6 dt. I know that I am faster than you. So the value is t raised to minus 5 by 6. Now it is exactly matching with the definition of gamma function. So guys here the power of x we got it as minus 5 by 6. So for definition we just have to add one in that. So that will become 1 by 3 as it is and this is gamma of minus 5 by 6 plus 1 and what is it? Yes it is 1 by 6. So this is the value of i1. Now let's solve i2. So here we have considered i2 as second integration. So let's write it down. So here I will say therefore i2 is equal to integration 0 to infinity e raised to minus y raised to 6 into y raised to 4 dy. Now again this is matching with the form here you can see the general form. So one term is exponential other one is algebraic. Let's put this power as t. So y raised to 6 I'll put it as t. So here I'll say put y raised to 6 equals to t. So y will become t raised to 1 by 6. Now guys I'm just following the steps which I have done in i1. So by doing similarly we'll get dy as 1 by 6 t raised to 1 by 6 minus 1 that is minus 5 by 6 dt integration limits will be from 0 to infinity similar and here we will get i2 as integration 0 to infinity e raised to minus t y raised to 4 that is y is t raised to 1 by 6 so this will be t raised to 1 by 6 raised to 4 that is t raised to 4 by 6 into dy the value of dy is 1 by 6 t raised to minus 5 by 6 dt. Now guys we can take this 1 by 6 outside in integration we will get e raised to minus t 
Now the addition of this two power will be it is minus 1 by 6. So t raised to minus 1 by 6 dt. Now guys this is again matching with the definition of gamma function that is e raised to minus t t raised to some number dt some constant dt and if we'll solve it by gamma function inside the gamma we just have to add 1 in that power so 1 by 6 is as it is and in the gamma we will get this power that is minus 1 by 6 plus 1 so that is 5 by 6 so this is the value of i2 so now guys we got the value of i1 as well as i2 now we'll substitute both the values in equation number one here we have one where we'll multiply both the values and we'll get the answer as pi by 9 so let's start so here i'll say therefore i is equal to i1 into i2 so the value of i1 that we got is 1 by 3 gamma 1 by 6 and the value of i2 that we got is 1 by 6 gamma 5 by 6 so now let's multiply the values so here we will get 1 by 3 into 1 by 6 that is 1 by 18 into gamma 1 by 6 gamma 5 by 6 now guys do not multiply these two values inside the gamma because i've seen many students that they consider it as a root where we multiply the values inside the root and we write down the root only once so do not make that mistake so here the question is how to solve this gamma 1 by 6 into gamma 5 by 6 so don't worry guys for that also we have a property so what is the property here you can see that property number 3 says if we have gamma n and in the second gamma we have 1 minus n then the answer is pi upon sine n pi now in our case first gamma we have 1 by 6 so 1 by 6 and second is 1 minus 1 by 6 which is 5 by 6 so it is exactly matching so here I'll represent it as 1 by 18 1 by 6 gamma 1 minus 1 by 6 because it is 5 by 6 and we know the value it is pi upon sin n pi so 1 by 18 as it is into pi upon sine of n pi so n is 1 by 6 so 1 by 6 into pi that is pi by 6 so what is the value of sine pi by 6 it is 1 by 2 so this will become 1 by 18 into pi upon 1 by 2 now we can cancel here that 2 ones are 2 2 nines are 18 and here we will get value as pi by 9 and guys if you see the original question then here we have proved that the multiplication of this two integral is equal to pi by 9 with the help of the definition of gamma function and the properties of gamma function so i'm very sure that you like this video and if you want to learn more concepts and the numericals about the engineering mathematics then do not forget to log into ekira.com where you will find all the videos and also you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter on ekira.com. Thank you very much.